let's uh, start our session A3. Oh, I consider it the algebra A3. Now we have the session A3, hypercomplex structure. Uh, the first talk uh, is by uh, Lino Resendis Ocampo, the title The Complex Bergman Projection. Uh, please, Lino. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. Okay, I am very glad to be here. Uh, uh, I am, <clears throat> it is, uh, for me, it is, um, it is a, a very good occasion to, uh, to send best regard to our um, friends in Poland. Okay, I will try to uh, present my, my, my screen uh, one moment because I am trying to to see the okay here is okay um, please uh, let me know if okay me, my screen okay I will share my screen okay and maybe it's here let me see if this is okay. Here is okay. Control H. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Let me to put uh, full. Um, okay. Okay. Here is the title: the complex Bergman projection. Okay. And uh, I must say before to start my presentation. That Maybe you can do control L so you make big screen. Maybe control L. Control L. Okay, it's here. Okay, so it's okay. Now, uh, yes. in the last uh, meeting that we have <coughs> at Ben Lebo, uh, Darius Patika, Magosha, and me decided to say uh, to have for uh, uh, for 2020 edition uh, year. Um, some special uh, congress devoted to Julian Wabinovich. However, all, all the situation in the world changed. And unfortunately, it was not possible to have uh, this uh, meeting uh, in the last year. Uh, however, I am very happy that for this effort to develop in this moment, this meeting. I think that uh, Julian Warminovich uh, is very happy, is very happy that, uh, uh, that this uh, seminar is running actually. Okay, well, uh, the title of my talk is the complex Berman projection. Well, um, the um, plan of the talk is the following. First, I will, I will talk about some general preliminaries and I will try to give some taste about of this big complex, uh, big complex theory. Okay, very, very simple. After, I will introduce the complex weighted measure. And the third point, it will be the complex Berman space. And it will have in no time I will talk about of the complex block space. Okay. Um, then uh, our next speaker is uh, <clears throat> is uh, Maria Elena Luna Elisa Raras, and uh, she uh, with uh, Michael Shapiro uh, and another people. They wrote a very beautiful book about of the complex. Theory. Okay, then uh, the notation, uh, the results, uh, that uh, the res uh, some of the results that that I that uh, um, that I see, they uh, appears in this book. Okay, so let me to start with preliminaries. First, we will consider the set of the complex numbers, and is defined in the following form. 
uh, the complex num numbers consist of the pairs C1 plus Yoda C2, where uh, uh, we are introducing some new imaginary unit. Yoda square is equal minus one. C1 and C2 are usual complex numbers. Okay, and we will denote the product ej equal to je equal k. That is, um, we are considering some associative and commutative algebra. And a sum and product of the complex numbers are present in the expected way. Okay, like that we operate with the normal complex numbers. Okay, there is no surprise there. However, the structure, the structure of the B-complex numbers suggests three conjugations. Here, we are writing these three conjugations. The first, we conjugate each complex component. In the second, we conjugate, uh, the conjugation is imitating the complex conjugation. And the third conjugation is a, some combination of the previous uh, conjugations. In particular, if we calcul, if we calcul this norm, the square of this norm, norm is, uh, is not exactly uh, the, uh, this module, this module, okay? is equal to C1 square plus C2 square. And uh, this algebra, of course, has zero divisors, okay? And then uh, one big complex number is a zero divisor if and only if C1 square plus C2 square is equal to zero. Or equivalently, we have this equality, okay? Then, for example, here are one example. Using precisely this module, then we have that if C is not a, a zero divisor, then we have this equality. But these are complex numbers, normal, usual complex numbers. Okay, these two. For this reason, mm -hmm, we can solve this system. Mm -hmm. with the complex cosinus and the complex sinus, okay? If theta is a solution, capital theta is a solution, then if we develop cosinus of capital theta and sinus of capital theta, we have this expression. And as you can see, then here is hyperbolicus, hyperbolic, hyperbolic cosinus of y and hyperbolic sinus of y. Then in fact, the argument depend only of theta, for instance. Mm -hmm. By this reason, it's possible to choose the principal argument for this the complex functions. Mm -hmm. And for instance, we, uh, we can choose a principal argument, theta, between zero and two p. And all the other possible arguments are of this form, okay? We need to sum, as usual, only uh, <clears throat> pair multiples of p, okay? And then, for instance, we get in this form, the trigonometric representation of the big complex number Z. You can see. Then, as you see, there are some, uh, um, it is very similar to the classical complex theory. Okay, now, the big complex number Z, we can write each component of Z in the real and imaginary regular parts as complex numbers. And then we can write each complex number in this called idempotent form, okay? 
and each the complex number can be written in this form beta one e plus beta two e dagger, where the change of variables are given in this form beta one equals c one minus e minus i times c two in beta two equal to c c one plus e c the two. And we can e, exactly e and e dagger are defined in this form. Of course, appears the product e j. Mm -hmm. And then we observe precisely <coughs> the justification of idempotem notation, because e times e is e e dagger e dagger is e dagger. However, the product between e and e dagger is equal to zero, and one can be written like e plus e dagger. Or more in general, if lambda belongs to the complex, can be written in this form. With this notation, all the zero divisors in the complex <coughs> numbers are of this form. Mm -hmm. Sida equal to lambda e. These two, these two um, um, complex lines, but in the direction of e and in the direction of the e dagger. Okay. Well, for instance, if we consider zeta sub n equal to one plus zeta sub n to power n, and we write in idempotent form, we consider this sum, this product, okay? This product, one, we write one of this form, and we can, because the rules of multiplication that we put here, then, this pro uh, this power can be written in this form, and if we calculate the limit when n tend to infinite, then we get here e to power beta one a, and of course this converge to e power beta two e dagger, the respective exponential functions, but in the variable beta one, and the second in the variable beta two only. You can see here. This component depends only the beta one, and this the second component depends only of beta two. If we return to our original normal form of the complex number, okay, then using our change of variables, then we rewrite our expression. Okay, this is very simple. We rewrite, rewrite, and rewrite. Mm -hmm. And when then we have this, but we can uh, recognize here cosinus and here sinus in the complex sense. Then, in particular, the exponential in this big complex uh, <coughs> set can be written in this form. Okay, again, you can see this uh, very uh, uh, big similarity with the classical theory, complex theory, okay? Well, we will consider only this conjugation, mm -hmm. set a star conjugation that is given, and this is in the normal form, and this is in the idempotent form, so it's possible to write in this form, okay? We will use exactly this. And uh, also, it will introduce this key norm, Okay, this key norm is, of course, uh, is not exactly a norm. Okay, in this in in the classical in the classical sense, and then if uh, C is not a zero divisor, divisor, then we can write the inverse of C, and then is given by this form, mm -hmm. and we define the K norm in this form. Okay, we are considering the modulus of the first component and the modulus of the second component, beta two. Mm -hmm. When we are writing in this part. Okay, now uh, in general, it's possible to, uh, to use the definitions uh, to introduce uh, um, the general, in, in general, uh, the classical, the classical uh, uh, functions that we know in complex variable, we can introduce in this theory. For instance, logarithm 
and exponential course. And then we can, uh, for beta one and beta two greater than zero, then we can calculate this number and we obtain this. Mm -hmm. And here it is very important because now if we consider these two special, the complex numbers where each component, each component is a real number. Mm -hmm. Then we consider the partial order here. Okay. We say that the W is less or equal than C if and only if we can compare each component and then each component of the first expression is less or equal than the second component of the second expression. In particular, if the K norm is less than one, mm -hmm, then we can calculate the difference one minus the K norm squared to power alpha, and we can write in this form, okay? We will use this expression a little bit later, okay? Then we have this. Observe here, then the power alpha is written here and also here, okay? Well, now let me define, we will consider some function defined in some domain omega of the B-complex plane. The, the B-complex uh, B -complex space or B-complex B space to B-complex space. Please observe that this function, mm -hmm, if we consider all the real components, this is a map from some, from some subset of R4 to R4. Okay, then we are in fact working with maps, okay, with some special class of maps from R4 to R4. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, now we will consider this function. We define the derivative of the function f at the point C0 mm -hmm. as this limit, okay? Observe here that this is the classical differential quotient, the classical generalization of the differential quotient, okay? Only it's necessary to consider that C minus C0 is an invertibly B complex number. It's still C minus C0 is not a zero device. Okay, we have then this. Mm -hmm. And then we will say that if F is, then the value of this limit, it will be the derivative of the function F in the point C0. Then if F is derivable, for all C in the domain, then we will say that F is a B-complex holomorphic function in omega. And because we are imitating the definition in the complex, first in the real variable, one real variable, and after in the uh, classical complex variable, one complex variable, then it is, uh, it's possible to show that if f is a complex holomorphic function, then satisfies the following Cauchy Riemann system. And as you can, as you can see, it's exactly, exactly the parallel to the Cauchy Riemann system in the classical case. But instead of the real variable x, we have C1, and instead of the real variable y, we have C2. Mm -hmm. Then we have this. This, uh, then the function, it will be the complex holomorphic if the cauchy riemann system is verified. The following result is essential in the theory of the complex holomorphic functions. Yet, and is the following. You can see here. We consider this domain in the B complex, <coughs> space, the complex plane, <laughs> a the complex function then with this decomposition, then in general, this decomposition, the first component depends, of course, of the variable beta one and beta two. 
And the second component depends in general on the variable beta one and beta two. However, if F is the complex holomorphic, if and only if the first component, the first component depends only on the first component beta one. And the second component G2 depends only on beta two. And it is more important, each component is holomorphic. This in beta one, this in beta two. Recall, this not depends on beta two, this not depends on beta one. Then we have a pair of holomorphic classical functions. And then with this term, then we can get a lot of holomorphic, the complex holomorphic functions, okay? And it's the, uh, it's the derivatives mm -hmm, are given only in the classical sense and the rules of derivative are the usual ones, okay? Um, okay, another thing that I can say here, let me see, see if I can change my, my uh, I would like to, to show here. Okay, here. Then we have the following. This is, for instance, the complex line E. And here is the complex line E dagger. And suppose that omega is here. Recall that this is a line of zero divisors. This is the other line of zero divisors. And we have that omega is here. However, if, if, if we have F of omega to be complex, the complex holomorphic, then here the function, the first component depends only on beta one. And here's the second component depend only on beta two. Okay, but then we can extend the domain of F to the product domain, even to the maximum product domain where G1 is holomorphic and G2 is holomorphic as function of beta two. For instance, here, in this point, we can consider this here. This point is not in the original domain, domain, but it's here, it's here. It's well defined because this point has first coordinate beta one. And then here, Sorry, Lino, we do not see what you are drawing. Oh. You have to share the, 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 the part of the drawing. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, sorry. Thank you, uh, thanks for, for, for the advice. Okay, let me see. Uh, Michelle, uh, are, you, are you saying? Now we see, now we see, yes. Yes, okay. Yes. So, okay, uh, as you can see, I will repeat a little bit quickly, okay? Here is uh, one function. This is the, do the original domain of omega, okay? Here is the complex line E and the complex line E dagger. They are the line of zero divisors, okay? And we consider that F is a B, uh, <clears throat> the complex holomorphic function, okay? Then we have here. However, then the component G1 depends holomorphically of beta one and also G2 of the uh, complex variable beta two. Then we can extend the domain, the domain of F to the minimum product domain that we are drawing here, okay? For instance, in this point, we can, because this point is inside of the domain, we can talk, uh, we can write G beta one without any problem for this point. And because, oh, sorry. Here is beta two, here is well-defined beta G two in beta two, then we can write G two of beta two. Ada. Okay. And then this is a very nice property of these big complex holomorphic functions. We can extend 
to the minimum product domain. Okay, then let me now to change to my presentation. I will, uh, okay, how should I? Um, now I need uh, what to do. Yeah, I think stop sharing and then again to share the other file. Okay, it's my share. Okay, let me see if it is. Uh, can you see or no? Now we see your presentation, yes. Okay, now I am the presentation. Okay, so, and then this is the corollary. Mm -hmm. A the complex holomorphic function can be extended on the minimum product domain that contains omega, okay? And here is the example. This is the power of these two be uh, the complex holomorphic function, the power theta n that can be written in this. This is, should be beta. beta and the exponential that can be written in this one. And of course, the derivative, the any derivative of the exponential, it will be the same function, as you can see. Okay. Now also, very good, nice property, very good, nice property is that we can develop any complex holomorphic function in each point where the function is uh, holomorphic. Mm -hmm. We can develop them in power series. Okay, in power series we can write without any problem. Only it will be necessary to to check uh, the complex ball of convergence. Okay. Well, now we will consider the unite disk, and uh, we will denote the unite disk in the complex plane by U. Then the B disk in the B complex uh, space, the complex plane, it will be a product type domain of this form. Then U times A plus theta. Okay, then can be written and uh, writing in this form. Beta one E plus beta two E dagger, where each component belongs to the, uh, to the unite disk, the regular unite disk. This will be the B disk in the B complex. Now, we will consider, it will be necessary this calculus. We will write in general for some function, okay? We will consider uh, in this moment, in this moment, we will consider the variables, mm -hmm, beta one and beta two, this. We will write the um, real components of the first component of beta one. Mm -hmm, it's here, writing with the real parts and imaginary parts of beta one. Recall, we have these two uh, components and beta two. We write in this part. You can see here, we have the R, uh, R4, R1, R2, R3, R4. And then we calculate the Jacobian matrix of this change of variables. Then the Jacobian matrix matrix of this change of variables has determinant four. And then if we have an, an a complex integrable function, we integrate, we calculate, <coughs> we calculate this integral, but in the disk, okay? Then of course, then we calculate these two components mm -hmm, in this normal form, as you can see. This is the classical Lebesgue measure, but the B-disk, okay? And this here, we are changing variables from the C variable to the beta one and beta two, two idempotent, idempotent variables. By this reason, you can see here E and E dagger. Mm -hmm. And of course, then we need to use the determinant of the change of variables. And then we write in this form. Also, we will consider the normalized areas measure of each disk. We will denote by dA, and it will be in this part. Because we are in the unite disk, we divide by one over p. Okay, this is the classic, in this is the classical Lebesgue measure, okay, in each p disk. Now, okay, 
Now we define the complex weighted measure BB sub alpha for each alpha greater than minus one. And it is will define in this form. Mm -hmm. Alpha times plus one over four, this weight mm -hmm, to power alpha and the classical dx1, it's the classical Lebesgue measure in R4, as you can see here, okay? But then we can write this quantity using the ida um notation, and then it's writing in this form, okay? This is, again, this is the classical Lebesgue measure, however, in the variables beta. For this reason, four is cancelled. And as you can see, if we distribute the measure, then can be writing in this form. You can see this factor. And then here, up, here appears this weighted measure in the first unite disk. And here is the normal Lebesgue measure in the unite disk with respect to the variable beta two. And for the second component is opposite. Here is the normal, normalized uh, Lebesgue measure in the first unit disk. Yes, and here is the uh, weighted measure, but in the variable B. Okay, uh, for I, I guess that many of you uh, has uh, quite knowledge about the weighted Berman spaces, and then we are recovering in each part these weighted Berman. And, uh, <clears throat> This weighted Berman measure, mm -hmm. weighted, uh, sorry, this weighted measure, okay? This weighted measure, this is the standard weighted measure, okay? Now, if, if we pass to polar coordinates and by definition of the gamma function, then we can calculate, we can calculate this inner product, mm -hmm. this inner product here is expressed with this integral c to power m conjugate of c to power n with respect with this weighted weighted Lebesgue measure okay this is writing using idempotent um, representation and the result is this if m is different of n equal zero if m equal n is this quantity gamma is of course the function gamma okay then as you can see then these are orthogonals. If M is different from N, these monomials are orthogonals, okay? And of course, the norm is no one, it's here, is this number. Mm -hmm. Recall that one is E plus E dagger, mm -hmm. because these of course are the complex numbers. But recall that one is equal E plus E dagger. And again, we can development for uh, uh, we can development for lambda greater than zero. If we consider C and W in the B disk, then we can calculate the service expansion of this quantity. And we get exactly the same representation that in the classical complex theory. We can development and then we get exactly the same result. And using precisely this representation and estimation of, uh, sorry, then we can get, we can calculate this integral on the B disk. This will be very useful. This is for alpha greater than minus one. Then we, we write this integral. This will be useful uh, in the definition of Berman projection, and we can we have this estimate if this uh, power eta is less than zero, it's comparable with one. Mm -hmm. If eta equals zero, it's comparable with logarithm of one, one, one minus the modulus of CK. And this power, if eta is greater than, than zero. And then we have this, okay? Then we have this integral. Well, here is necessary to development in power series and make some estimation about of the function gamma. Then here's the introduction of the B-complex Berman space with domain the B-disk. 
okay? With the note of here, alpha, it will be greater than minus one, P greater than zero, see? Then the, the complex Berman space consists of the B-complex holomorphic functions in the complex space, the normal uh, LP of the unit disk with this measure, this, with this uh, weight measure, okay? Such that the function is P integrable in the unit disk. Okay, additionally, we are supposing that is the complex holomorphic, and that is the complex Berman space. Okay, then we have this. This should be finite. Each component should be finite, essentially. Okay, then we have the following, the following result. The first as well is the following. If we consider P greater than zero and alpha greater than minus one, then we can decompose our Bergman space and the respective Bergman space in the first component and the respective Bergman space in the second component. Moreover, moreover, we have here mm -hmm, the integral that defines the Bergman space can be written in this form. In particular, mm -hmm, the Bergman norm can be writing in this form. The proof is almost directly, but I, uh, 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 because it's not uh, complicated, I will write here the, the proof. Here, you can see the power P, but using idempotent notation with the compose. Here, the function depends only on beta one, the first component, and the second component depends only on beta two, because F is the complex holomorphic. Here is our weighted measure, our B complex weight measure. And then <clears throat> we multiply, okay? And we know that E for E dagger is equal to zero. And E for E is E, E dagger by E dagger is equal to E dagger. And then we make the multiplication. And then we get this first integral in the first component and this in the second component on the B disk. Then we apply, <coughs> we iterate the integral and we have it, okay? Then we, we integrate in the second disk. Mm -hmm. Recall that there is normalized, the normalized measure. And in the second component, the normalized measure is in the first disk. And here is exactly the weighted measure in beta one, in the second component, the weighted measure in the second, mm -hmm. with respect to beta two. And this integral is equal one, this integral is equal one, and then we have this. Mm -hmm. And then we have this decomposition for the, uh, for the <clears throat> uh, norm of the weighted Berman, the complex Berman space. Okay, now, it's possible also to prove that every point evaluation in the BDs is a bounded linear functional on the B-complex Berman space. Also, the weighted Berman space is closed in the LP uh, uh, space. And by this reason, in particular, is complete. And also, mm -hmm, if we consider some B-complex function in the Bergman space, then can be approximate in the <coughs> Norman, in the Bergman Norman, by the complex polynomials. Mm -hmm. Can be approximate. Then this will uh, we will use this, this uh, to in order to put, uh, if we use this, we will generalize the Bergman projection. Now we consider the case P equal to. Okay. Uh, then the Berman space A2 alpha is complete. And we will see then it's a Hilbert space. And we defined precisely these monomials, okay? These monomials. And then we can prove that this set of monomials is an orthonormal in L2. In particular, it will be a basis for the space, for the Berman space A2 with weight alpha. 
Here is the proof. Again, is not difficult because we calculate previously uh, uh, <clears throat> the orthogonal product of monomials. We have here, here the inner product mm -hmm. with weight alpha. Here is the product. This is the conjugate. Here are the definition. Here is power zeta m. And here is the conjugate power cn. Then we calculate, we can write the constants outside of the integral. And we have precisely the product of the, these monomials. But we calculate before if m is different from n is equal to zero. If, if m is equal to n is some number, but this can relate with this. And for this reason, this is the exactly delta mn. Okay, and by this reason, we have that this is an orthogonal basis of the Berman space. Mm -hmm. Well, if we consider a, a other function g in the Berman space a2 alpha, then we again, we can calculate this power, uh, this inner product. And in particular, if f is equal to g, then we get this classical uh, this classical equality about uh, the norma to square, norm square of F that is, is, is given by this series. Okay, we can see here, we can consider here the modulus to power square. Okay, that is, this is finite. See, this is a finite. Okay, this is a typical characterization of functions in this space. Okay, I recall this. Uh, this equality because now mm -hmm, we will consider uh, for alpha greater than one we will consider then it's possible then consider pk alpha the orthogonal projection from the l2 space to the berman projection and the formula of this berman projection that is the title of this talk mm -hmm, see the formula see is this Mm -hmm. pk alpha o f is given of this form, okay? It's given in this form. The power f is here, here is the weighted measure, and this will be the kernel, okay? And the proof, the proof is, uh, we use our previous results to give the proof. We consider f in this space L2, then we will write the projection using our orthonormal basis that it's here, Okay, this will be the coefficients. These inner products must, uh, are given a uh, coefficient. And then we calculate, okay? Because recall that the projection is self-adjoint. Then we can change here the position of the projection. And because E and is uh, be complex, holomorphic, then the projection is itself, okay? And then we calculate this inner product. We have this. Okay, and then we get this from here. Mm -hmm. And okay, we are here. Mm -hmm. And so when C, we write here, it's here, the expression of this monomial is put here. Then we can interchange integral and summation. We interchange, here's the integral now on the disk. Okay, f of w does not, <coughs> we put here, here is the sum, okay? But however, the sum here is precisely, this sum here is precisely this quantity. One minus c, w star to power two plus alpha. Mm -hmm. And then we have here the projection. See, this is exactly the Berman projection. Okay, then of course, they in particular, we have uh, we found the I, current. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Elena, you have one minute. Okay, then one we minute. Have, yes, yes, yes. Then we have here the Berman kernel, and then we can decompose the Berman kernel in these two Berman kernels, mm -hmm. classical Berman kernels, and only uh, I will finish with this theorem, okay? Um, 
If we have this white Berman projection from the L2 to the Berman space, then if we consider the Berman projection of F, it will be almost, almost the Berman projection of the component G1 and almost the Berman projection of G2. It's not, it's, here we can see tilde, tilde, tilde. See, are given by this quantity. It's not exactly the Berman projection of G1 and G2, it's this. Are given by this. And the proof is very easy because if you write here the component by components here, then here depends of G1, or gamma one and gamma two. And then we need to integrate to integrate in U1, U1 and U2. And then we integrate G1 here, but only with the respect to G2. Then this is a function that depends of G1. And here is the kernel of G1, of, uh, gamma, uh, of G1, okay, of the first component. And I key the kernel of the second component. But this reason, this is the function that it is necessary to introduce to calculate the Berman projection. Okay, I finish. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Um, I have one. Uh, Lena uh, Luna Elizaras, you have uh, a question? No. Uh, no, no. I I liked a lot the the. Okay, okay. Talk. I I have some questions. Yes, yes. Uh, your algebra, big complex numbers, is a commutative algebra. Uh, we can construct uh, elementary functions in this algebra as uh, the principal extensions of uh, uh, holomorphic functions of complex variable. It is well known. Uh, is, uh, are you uh, elementary functions, uh, for example, co cosinus or sinus, uh, is the same uh, function on, or other functions? Uh, sorry, uh, I, I couldn't understand uh, very well because I can't hear uh, well, okay? Uh, but in, in general, uh, I will present here some examples where it's possible to generalize the classical, the classical and well-known uh, um, holomorphic functions. It's possible to generalize in the complex, uh, as the complex functions, okay? But this is necessary to have, uh, um, to be very careful to define exactly what is the meaning, okay? But in general, it's possible to reproduce, okay? Uh, I think that Maria Elena, the next speaker, uh, could say uh, some words more about all this because she's one of the authors of this book that I was reading in order to, to write this, this note, okay? And uh, however, basically, this is exactly uh, the situation, okay? Because of course, it's possible to, to consider uh, this idempotent composition to get examples. Uh, but you can see that it's possible to mix quite different holomorphic functions. You can, uh, you can, for instance, in your first component, you can choose, for instance, sinus. And in the second component, you can use some Dirlech function, holomorphic, but of the type of Dirlech, some series, uh, very strange, okay? And then you can get some, a very interesting big complex function, okay? That it is- okay. I have uh, 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 questions also. Uh, let, let me demonstrate your first theorem. My first theorem and first theorem uh, of. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, maybe this theorem, I think so. Yes. Uh, let me, this yes, theorem? Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. Uh, this representation of the function f, uh, uh, 
see uh, that uh, your uh, allomorphic function is the same function as uh, monogenic function considered in uh, our uh, in my talk. Uh, and, uh, so uh, the corollary. Let's uh, me demonstrate uh, your corollary for this theorem. Lena. See, sorry, uh, because I can hear you uh, well. Uh, this uh, this representation uh, demonstrates that your uh, allomorphic function uh -huh. is the same function as monogenic functions in uh, the uh, that sense that uh, considered at my talk today. Uh, I uh, ask you to uh, see uh, to, demon uh, to demonstrate uh, the already from this theorem. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, the problem is that uh, uh, the transmission uh, is interrupted. I, I hear, I hear, Lino. Maybe later I will check what are you asking, Sergey. Okay, so. To, to understand very well your question, I need to recall the, 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 the function that you are meaning. And we can check and we I, I will contact you to understand if it is the same or not. Okay. Okay. I, I would like to see your corollary from this theorem. Corollary? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, in this case, your corollary is uh, the a particular case of more general theorem uh, proved by me and uh, my follower Roman Puchtyevich. I can see this. Uh, I, can, uh, I cannot see uh, <laughs> proved in uh, uh, 2014. At, uh -huh. uh, at uh, Romanian uh, mathematics uh, Romanian journal. Okay. Uh, I I can uh, uh, to uh, send uh, to send uh, our paper for you. Yes, you. Uh, uh, please only recall that this is only preliminary fact. Okay, this all this result are writing in the book, for instance, that also write Bailey uh, Price Shapiro and, and Bailey uh, Price uh, also. Okay. I can tell you that uh, Bailey Price he, this, he has a book written in the nineties. He proved this uh, this theorem and the corollary. Okay, these are no new results. This was only are, they are not news. They yeah. are not news. See, they are only preliminaries. They are not new results. Okay, only preliminaries to give some taste about of this theory and some difference with, in, in particular, with a, a, a complex uh, with the theory of C two complex variables. Okay. Only was uh, I, I write this result only to show uh, some difference and some peculiarities, but uh, these are well known results. Short question, may I have one? Okay, please. When when quaternion has not the complex uh, representation? When quaternion is sorry? When, when arbitrary quaternion has no B complex representation? My, uh, well, in particular, recall that quaternions are not uh, uh, commutative, for instance. Okay, this yeah. is an algebra that is associative and commutative. Okay, and one of the most uh, uh, strongest difference, for instance, is that a monogenic function uh, has not, uh, uh, can be represented using uh, factor integrals in, uh, can be development using factor uh, variables. However, we cannot use the classical uh, uh, quaternionic variable to development some monogenic function. Okay, there is not equivalence. Thank you very much. Okay. Any questions, Elsa, or comments? Okay, let's to thank uh, uh, the, the talker for his uh, very interesting talk. 
Uh, now, 